Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I believe this is episode 22. Uh, I'm your host, Sam Riley. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And today we actually have not one, but two guests. Today we have Ben Parrott, who is the winner of the Omaha LCQ. You've also seen him in the finals of the Kansas Petite Cup, and he made a heartbreaking 17th place in the Kansas City Crystal Cup. How you doing, Ben? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, and then we also have Alfred Clausen, who, um, wow, he just, he's been crushing these, these LQs lately. He won not just the games below, which was the first one he attended, but he also won the Tampa one, which is the next one he attended. I don't know how many more he's going to win. He's known as the gatekeeper here in Tampa. How are you doing, Alfred? Uh, pretty good. Going for four. <laughs> good. Uh, and, and before we move on, I'd like to say a special shout out to our sponsor, Cars of Ivalice. Uh, if you want to check them out. Oh, Zach sporting their shirt today. Oh, you can yeah. <laughs> you can check them out for your singles and your your uh, your sleeves and your play mats. I think that they're they've gotten their their uh, Minfilia sleeves in, um, which those things are sexy. So check <laughs> check those guys out. Okay, so this weekend uh, coming up, we got ten uh, local qualifiers that'll get you a, a qualification to nationals. Uh, we got them all across the U.S. Uh, New York, Virginia, North Carolina, Illinois, uh, oh. Georgia. Uh, yeah. yeah, so and so ten and, more and, spots. And if you're going to if you're going to play in those, now is the time to play in them, right? Because not only are these people that are are the real grinders, like mostly qualified, but then you have like people like Alfred uh, who just can't play this weekend. So it's yeah. your one, it's your it's your chance. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think Ben, I believe he's going to be at one of them, and I'll be at the same one. So we'll be there to gatekeep. So. So, so yeah, be, I'm looking forward to seeing you there, Cody. So there'll be yeah, two, two soul crushing going on. Interesting. That's awesome. <laughs> oh man. So uh, we found out the date or the uh, date to nationals as well, right? And then location uh, of that. Yeah, we got the la- so we got the last chance qualifier is going to be uh, at the Hilton in Los Angeles. It's yeah. also where Nats is going to be held. Uh, the last That's LCQ true. is going to be uh, September 28th, which is that Friday, and then Nats will be that Saturday and Sunday on the 29th and 30th. It is the same location as Nationals last year, uh, so if anybody who went to Nationals in the past year, uh, it would be the same place that we were at. Uh, yeah, it was a great great venue last year. Beautiful place, good hotel, lots of space. It was really awesome. Now, yeah. I'll, I'll, start with, I'll start with you, Cody, real quick. Are you, pl- are you planning on playing in that LQ? Are you talking about uh, the, the one before Nats? Yeah. Uh, if they let us, I will definitely play, as long as I make it into California on time. Interesting. All right. What about what about you, Ben? Um, I don't know. I'm in the air. I was actually talking to my team about that. Um, like, if we do play, are you going to run your deck that you're running at Nats and let everyone right. see the day early? Right. Like, That's... Are you going to play a fun deck and maybe like scope out some decks and risk, you know, not getting good rest? It's uh, there's the some thing... pros and cons. So right. The thing is, is that if so, like, you could just play whatever the best deck is going into the form the that that event. Like the no, the, there will be a known best deck, and then the people who think that they have a deck that's good enough to qualify, but they haven't seen it, but they haven't had a chance to play it, will play in that event. So it might be a good time to kind of to scope out what could be like a breakout deck for the next day. Right. Yeah. What about you, Alfred? Would you play in the Would you play in the last chance qualifier, or would you be more interested in you know resting or going out? Uh, I do better with rest. Yeah. Interesting. What about you, Sam? What are you going to uh, do? I I think that I would play in it because um, if I come up with something like some sort of like very secretive deck, which I've been working on, but if, if it turns out to be really good, then I will definitely like hold that deck. But if I'm going to just play what I think is like, so for example, if it was Earthwind, I wouldn't have any trouble just playing Earthwind the day before too, um, just to get more practice reps in. So... And those are the people that you really want to play against because their their entire Saturday Sunday is on the line. Um, so you know, I, I think that I would probably play, and I'd probably play the deck I plan on playing the next day, unless it's some sort of very unknown rogue deck. So, yeah, I I don't, I don't think that there's enough incentive. Like, let's say you go, let's say like, I mean, we're in Opus Six now, but if we we're in Opus Five, and you knew that it was an Earth Wind, there's not enough that you could do in the early game against a deck like that. It really is like the jund of the format. It felt like, like there's mm-hmm. not enough where, like, if you knew what I was on, you could change your game style based on that. Whereas, like, it would be different if I was on Mono Water or Mono Ice. Those two decks can force a very specific game style plan. Whereas Earth Wind doesn't really care what you're doing; it's the one that's going to adapt to it. So it just depends I like on the deck, it. I guess. 
Yeah, I think you've talked me into playing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Have they um, um have they released whether or not we can play if we're qualified in that last chance? They haven't said we can't, so Yeah. Okay, because I'm playing the local qualifiers now, so I don't know why we couldn't play in those that, as well. That's, a, that's my exact reasoning and, and thought. That's, a, that's yeah. what I thought. Also, I know, like, Mr. Cool, he played in their last chance qualifier when he was already qualified. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, speaking of last chance qualifiers, we actually just got done with one this weekend. Um, yes. We'll have Alfred and, and Ben talk you guys' ear off because they have much better experience than uh, Cody, Zach, and I. Uh, they, I'll tell you about my experience. To the top to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you about my experience uh, quickly. Um, I went into it just wanting to have fun, um, because I, to be honest with you, I was kind of over the format. I knew that the tricolor monsters deck was, in my opinion, the strongest deck, um, and it was a lot of fun to play. But I had played that so much. Zach and I grinded that even during Opus Four. We were grinding that so much that I just kind of wanted to play with something different. Um, and then, so I ended up just playing water wind and, uh, I got crushed most of the matches where I just didn't draw backups. Like, uh, in game one, for example, against, um, Jamal, uh, who eventually made top four, I opened with no backups. I mulliganed into no backups. I played a turn one Zidane, which is like the best I can hope for, for no backups. Uh, and I Zidane, like I, something out of his hand. Then he untapped, drew, like, Black Mage. Black Mage to my Zidane to kill it for free. <laughs> right, yeah. And then I untapped, no backups, okay? Then the next turn, I draw my first backup, which was Minwu. And, I'm just, and, and he's, by the way, he's already got an archer on the on the field. So that, that that's kind of my experience at the LQ. <laughs> Granted, I didn't, I didn't, you know, it's not like I didn't try. I did try, um, but I didn't try too hard with my deck choice. I was just kind of having fun. Uh, and trying to play with like these rangers and like cards I don't normally play with, so it didn't go super well for me. But I had a good time. I'm not sad that I played in it. Yeah, and uh, similarly, cause my mine will be a pretty brief overview of what happened with my weekend. Uh, so round one, uh, I was playing a mirror. Uh, it wasn't too many cards off actually. I was playing the wind earth still uh, with a couple edits, and I was. Feeling pretty good. He was kind of discarding the whole hand, trying to kill me quick because he saw he was on the mirror, and I guess he didn't want to deal with the like late game interactions. Uh, there, but there was one critical turn where I he was, had all of his hand was on the field. Uh, he only had three backups. I had uh, I think four at the time. Uh, through a series of plays, I ended up with five backups, but my fifth one searched Shantoto. So the next turn, I was planning on you know breaking a backup uh, with Archer, probably his Chaos or his Semi. And then Shantoto, and then there's no way I lost the game from there. And he drew, and I completely forgot to account for the fact he could draw Emperor. So oh. he played Emperor, and I lost the game because I could not answer the Emperor uh, in order to get my Shantoto down. And I Sam pointed out after the match, and I just felt like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I think that was uh, that was one of the things that I think like one of the good things about like rewatching matches like that, you know, like because that actually happened to my opponent during the Petite Cup, like. Yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, Crystal Cup. Like that's one. That's one of the things you can actually do with the deck is you uh, you plan to like lock them out of their backups. Right, right. And then uh, round two, I played Sam. <laughs> oh. Uh, we because we both lost round one, and then we played each other. Yep. Uh, and he won when we played. I had the weirdest series of draws, but I, I don't think even if I had a good draw, that was yeah. A very good I also locked you out of your backups uh, in that round too, but I don't think there was yeah. much you could do about it. But like. But it was I, more of like, like you I had to you had to do it right right yeah I, I had to pitch backups to play things so I didn't right. die which is right. not a good place to be in a deck like that um, and then he did offer the concession to have me continue but because of the oh, way I man. played I just didn't feel good about it and I uh, just let him take it and I dropped <laughs> oh Zach we'll so, get yeah. it next time um, so yeah Cody <laughs> if you want to talk about your weekend uh, mine is very similar to how you sounded uh, so we only had eleven people. At the O'Fallon one. Um, oh man, that must have been nice. <laughs> so, uh, I think you I ever qualify with eleven. You qualify with any number now. Alfred qualified oh. with six in Gainesville. Alfred's first one was six. Which, again, in his you know defense, then he crushed the one at Tampa. Like, yeah. Not even close. So <laughs> lost, lost no matches. Did you lose any game? Oh, we'll talk about it anyway. Actually, we'll, we'll talk about it. Go ahead, Cody. Yeah. We'll... Okay, so uh, round one, I sit down against, uh, let me find, it was a guy playing Mono Win. I was still on Mono Ice. His name was Cesaro Rodriguez. He actually ended up winning the whole thing. Um, I actually opened super well. I opened 
I like to open backups when I play ice. Um, and I got going, uh, but he kept playing Layak after Layak after Layak, which I tell everybody. Everybody who's like complaining about ice, that's just the card that beats us. Is it Layak. is really great, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I, uh, um, I actually played against him in the Crystal Cup, I think. I don't think he was on Mono yeah. Wind at the time, but I definitely played against uh, him. He was on Chocobos at, at the okay. Crystal he, he, Yeah, he also top 16 the uh, KC Crystal Cup. Got um, okay, yep. So he ended up beating me. I couldn't get I couldn't get rid of his Adele, unfortunately. I'd never drew a Glacia. Um, and then round two, I played... Actually, he was a World of Warcraft trading card game. Uh, he won Nationals and he went to Worlds before. So that was kind of interesting to talk to him about that. Uh, but he was also on Mono Ice. And I opened the heavy discard. And he opened the backup plays and just slowly just outpaced me. Right. Uh, so then after that, I won because I got a buy the next round, and then <laughs> <laughs> I won my last round, and I think I got, like, fifth or sixth or seventh. But oh, Yeah, all right, so, Ben, how'd you do? Tell us a little bit about yours. Yours was 17 players, or 22 players, right? 22 players. Yeah, 22 players, so it was five-round yeah. Swiss, uh, cut the top eight. Um, oh, it was such an amazing venue, first of all. So it was, like, a three-hour drive from Kansas City, mm-hmm. and we've got two carloads of people going, so, like, a full team <laughs> headed up there. Full caravan. Um, oh, yeah, it was great. Uh, good discussion the whole way. Um, talking deck choices, card choices, like strategies. Um, we get up there, we're all feeling good, and the the venue is at Legendary Wolf Games, and it's a card shop like I've never seen before because it's in the middle of like a shopping mall. So imagine like your biggest shopping mall, put a card shop in there. That's what it looked like and in your so normally, picture. Yeah, 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 it was awesome. So like after we all registered, we the whole team like left the shop and went to like the food court, and we all like grabbed a massive table and we're all like the last of us are doing our deck regging and talking and strategies and i mean a lot of people had their decks laid out when we walked into the card shop so we all like knew half of the field already because they just had their decks spread and so we right. knew what we were walking into and talking strategies and all that but um but no we get in there everyone was super nice in omaha all their locals there were super nice um real friendly like so friendly that people like i know you guys don't use dice like to mark your plus 1000 markers like maria or things right. like that mm-hmm. And I like to, and I know it's some people do, some people don't, but they were all about it. And I actually think it speeds the game up, because then you don't always have to ask what's their power. Like, there's nothing hidden. You're not trying to hide anything from your opponents. But uh, but everyone was really friendly, like, doing that for each other. And anyway, um, all my matches went real well. Round one, I played, of course, someone from Kansas City. <laughs> um, with 22 players, and you take seven people up there, we're a third of the field. Right. So um, play a friend. Uh, she's running the SoCal uh, Ice Lightning deck that won it all. But it was an easy match because she didn't see any lightning backups. So <laughs> won that. Uh, round two played the mirror match, and I was like, oh, no. He got Dada Luma Control on real quick because I was running. Oh, I should say that. I was running um, Earth Wind, Dada Luma Control, pretty much Sam's build that he won the Crystal Cup with just with a few tweaks. And I've only been playing it for two weeks. I've only been playing it since I saw it dominate the Crystal Cup. I was like, oh, my God, this is the deck of Opus 5. Like, I've only got two weeks left to try and make this thing work. Um, but anyway, so I saw that mirror match in round two, and he had daddy control at first. Uh, luckily, I cleared it, um, and it got my own daddy control, and it was just over from there. Um, round three and four, I play Mono Water Fusilia Control, kind of like the Toronto first place <laughs> list, yeah. Toronto Crystal Cup. Um, the round three match was super easy, because I'm on the play, I play two backups, one of them being Archer. Uh, his turn, he plays one backup goes back to me, I just tap two, play another two drop backup, and then his second turn he just plays an ash and no second backup. Oh, I'm man. like, yeah, I've got an archer on the field, so it just goes back to me, I archer is only backup, and then easy peasy from there, archer is just MVP. Um, <laughs> round four though, played against a really good opponent, Jack, and um, he even said, like, he's like, I probably shouldn't keep this opening hand, and this was the one match I lost all day. Um, he's like, I probably shouldn't keep this opening hand, but I'm going to keep it. So I don't know if he knew what I was on, but he had three ashes in his opening hand. Oh, jeez. And so, he just, yeah, and he's on the play. He just goes first turn ash. And um, and I actually like it when my opponent just goes super aggressive, like just goes all in because they're oh, just going to walk yeah. into a Chantoto. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Sam. Like you know that you want them to go all forwards. You'll go all backups. You'll get your Chantoto, and then you're just going to win the long game. But Jack was really good because he never played more than two backups on the field at any time. He just wasn't going to walk into a high-value Chantoto play. Yeah. Or, yeah, sorry, two forwards. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I kept using as much removal as I could find, and so did he. And it was just an uphill battle. He got early damage on. I think I, there were seven to three, and I'd gone through all three ashes, three Bismarcks, three Leviathans, uh, 
three Imperial Summoners, uh, a fan for Chichulu or Chichusulin. Um, and he just got through with a lone Garnet that I just couldn't target anymore. Like, it was just right. over from there. And so, um, good match, but he was ended up being the one seed. And then round five, I played another KC friend, and we both made it into top eight, so that was fine. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, top eight. Um, five of top eight were Kansas City players. Oh, that's awesome. And then, Wait, it was top oh, eight in an 11 person event? No, it was so it no, was no, a we were, twenty two person event. Oh twenty two. Oh okay, yeah. right. I had it. So okay. it te- it technically should have been a four a top four. Yeah, it should but... have been top four. Yeah. What no, I'm pretty sure if you have seventeen or more, it's top No, that's eight, that's for right? magic. For mm-hmm. magic it is oh, that yeah. way. For Final Fantasy it's twenty four before it hits top eight. Yeah, because oh. we, we had what, nineteen players and they we only got top four? We had nineteen, but we had top four. Yeah. Right. And oh, we that messaged, a huge uh, square about it and they confirmed that yeah, not until you hit. Right, yeah. Well, I can't complain oh. now, right? Yeah, right. No, no, no. I want to drop. Well, wow, we'll get this. That was so huge in my favor then, because uh, so five of us from Kansas City make uh, make the top eight, and there was yeah. no undefeated. Actually, the way it worked, every round, the person that got paired up or paired down, however, the worst record always won out. Yeah. So oh, there were four X ones and then four X twos that got in. Um, I'm the four seed, and Jack, the person who beat me, is the one seed. So if yeah. I win, I'm gonna play him. But my buddy, uh, CJ, was the 8 seed and upset Jack by playing, uh, CJ was playing Earthfire FF7, like just aggro, oh, and wow. it just out aggro, mono water, it was which great. Is, which is its um, weakness, so. Yeah, exactly, and so that meant I didn't have to play Jack in the semifinals. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the top four was all KC players, was all That's Team awesome. Cash. Yeah, it was nuts. Um, and so... Um, so that's when you just have to beat a friend to continue on. So yeah. I beat a friend, CJ. Um, my buddy Pat, who you guys probably know, he was the the TO at the, the Crystal Cup. During yeah. the Crystal Cup, I collected his cash. Yeah. He's playing Golbez. He took second. Um, he beats our friend Nick, who was playing uh, Water Lightning Knights, uh, which was really strong uh, with Rams. It was just so strong. Yeah. But um, And that, that deck originally is from Kansas, right? Or it's from your guys' area, the Knights deck, the original... Yeah. Um, yeah. Water lightning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was fine tuned. It played so well. But uh but uh I was kinda watching their match. I was focused on my match, you know, they were right next to me, but Golbez just got off too quick for it to to get set up. Yeah. So um Yeah. And and then uh and then so we get to the finals and it's me and I don't know if you guys know Pat's like my best friend. He's my roommate yeah. and friends since we were teenagers. And um he just looks at me like we're in the finals, he, he shakes my hand, he goes, Congrats, you're going to Nats and he just gives me the match. <laughs> Oh wow! And now, albeit we've played against each other a ton, like his yeah. Golbez versus my deck, like he's the reason I'm so good. He's the reason like half of Team Cash is as good as they are as well. Like Pat's a master at this game; yeah. he's been playing TCGs for forever. But um, like he still wants to qualify, but he knew how much it meant to me, and and I didn't know he was just going to concede to me. But a, it saved us an hour back on our trip because it's a three-hour drive and it's already really late. The tournament starts till two p.m. Right. So and it's already like ten p.m. at this point. But uh. But yeah, he just actually scooped it to me. I know it would have been an epic finals. It would have gone to game three like all of our matches normally do. Yeah. And it could have been... It's like a 50-50 match. His goal bed deck is so, so fine-tuned. But yeah. um, Is it all back up, or um, all forwards? Or is it... Um... No, no, no. It's uh, it's like... it's It's got Alcid combo. Okay, I'll um, have to message him I, for a list. Yeah, yeah, ha- have him send me that. <laughs> so that's just it. Me and Pat were actually talking. Do we want to make his deck public? You know, oh, like yeah. I, I'm pretty sure Miles Tyler, the the guy that runs Legendary Wolf Games, will eventually post a deck list. I'm sure any day now. Okay, I um, see him post all the time. Yeah, and uh, and like Pat's been running Goldbus for a while, but it's been like top secret, like a Sam deck, you know. Um, and it dominates the meta whenever he plays it. Uh, and he he runs all the tournaments at Collector's Cash though, so he never gets to play it. But right. the he played it one time that Thursday night before the this last weekend. And he top forward with it. He crushed. There's actually four Golbez decks out of 20 players at our collector's cash locals tournament. Oh, and wow. So, yeah, it was nuts. So I definitely got my practice in against it. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, he just he steamrolled. His only loss was the same guy that I lost to, Jack, the Mono Water. Yeah, interesting. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so it, it, everything worked out really well. Um, That's awesome. So you got your I took so many invite. pictures. Yeah. The event. yeah, I got the Nats invite. Uh, which is, so which cool. is coming um, after your 17th place. Uh, oh which is so heartbreaking right. uh for those of you guys that don't know yeah. you know i had we had talked about like not wanting to get paired against each other ben and i at the crystal cup up until the seventh round where we we're like you know what it's okay we can get paired against each other now 
because a loss puts us both in. And so we sit down and yeah. we have a good match. All, all be, it's a bit casual because we both just assume we're in. You know, um, I got lucky and won that match because he didn't open up with very many backups. Um, and then Archer was MVP there also. And yeah. then we casually shake each other's hand and say, good luck in top 16. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then Ben got yeah. seven, 17th. That was rough. My only two losses in the Crystal Cup were to uh, Joe Luzinski in round three, who was the defending North American champion. And I even still could have won that. Um, I was playing Mono Lightning, and I started out real aggro and had him mm-hmm. all. But then I kind of chilled out and like, oh, I got this. I'll play more control and just let him set up, and it was over. And then my only other loss was to you, Sam. So I lost to the defending North American champion. And then, of course, you, the champion, to win it all. And... A friend of mine was even like, "Well, Ben, if you want to win, you got to beat the champs." And it's like, "Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're right. Like, don't re- don't rely on tiebreakers." Yeah. So yeah, that was a that was a disheartening X two for me for sure. So so speaking of champs, Alfred, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell us a little about your Tampa experience, man. All right. So for most of the format, I tried to, I tried staying away from like mono decks, and but for the la- for the two local qualifiers. I ended up playing Mono Lightning and this time Mono Ice, exactly card for card Cody's build. Yeah. So with so with that oh, yeah. deck, I I played tested a few games. Uh, I played especially against uh, Andy Carmona mm-hmm. and. Did you did it cut out there for you guys? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I lost him. I I can't hear anything. Um, Alfred, Alfred, you still there? So Alfred's mic might have cut out. Um, real quick, while we while we get that in, um, I know he play he was play testing his, he played it with uh, Andy Carmona for a bit, um, mm-hmm. and then also so he played Cody's exact deck list. He <laughs> borrowed the cards from myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, funny enough, he actually played in, in Gainesville when he won that one too. Oh. He borrowed that deck from me. We can hear you now, Alfred. He borrowed that deck from me too. That was my exact mono lightning list. Um, that's the list I also sent Ben later. Yeah, that was a sexy list. I really yeah. like that model. So, and list. and you played that one, right, Alfred? Yeah, I played the exact list. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, no. You changed one card, right? You you put it in Emperor or something like that because there's oh, a lot wait, of monsters mono, deck. The mono lightning build. When you played, yeah, the, I, yeah. I played. I put in one Emperor, took out one Zemus. Okay. Yeah. So so tell us more about the Tampa. So you you were testing with Andy. So I was testing with Andy. I really liked how well the deck flowed together. So I was just like, you know what, Sam? I want to play Cody's list. And it was it was actually my first time playing uh, Mono Ice for this format. So I was just like, you know what? I'm ready for anything. Going to round yeah. one, Mono Water. And I'm just like, golden. Yeah, I, is... I picked the right deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was exactly perfect. Um, opponent was playing a more... They were playing a more like old-fashioned kind of like an opus three kind where they're playing like decent for decent value forwards and like a bunch of control summons uh i ended up just like dropping an early orphan freezing a titus legend the whole game and he couldn't do anything oh geez titus legend sweet round two was the was basically the exact same story I played against Mono Water, one of the newer players at our locals. I'm really bad at remembering names. Was it Jacob? Um, I think so. The one that we were helping with his list uh, the night before. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, face Mono Water, or uh, face Mono Water again, same story. Just felt really good. That matchup's really solid for Mono Ice. Of course, yeah. You get to Going put down round... pressure and discard their hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going to round three, I'm playing uh, I, against uh, our friend Ian. He's playing the Ice Water Ultimisia deck that he really likes. Yeah. He got to the point where he had Camblinot and Ultimisia on board, jammed them both with a vein. He couldn't, oh. Oh. he couldn't do anything about that. And when he had the answer to the vein, I just respond and say, oh, Goodbye, uh, Zalera. Goodbye to all of your dudes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he just, he had no answers for it. Round four, I faced Jamal. He's playing, what was it? The uh, Lightning Wind Tempo deck. 
Yeah, yep. the Lightning Wind. That deck felt that deck felt like another deck that was just like completely helpless against uh, what Mono Ice does. Yeah, that uh, it's it's a very Opus Four E deck, right? Yeah. 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 That was like what Hildebrand and Chocobos. What's the? No, it's 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 like everything is relying on damage, so it has like. Um, Rick Diaz, I United the Alcid combo, but it has like Orlando's, Cactars, um, Cactars uh, uh, Ramaz. So. Yeah, he had a couple Layaks, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was a very weird. It was a very weird deck. It just felt like completely helpless uh, against what Mono Ice does. Right. He never really had like good avenues to victory because he's just sitting there, and it's like he would have one piece of his combo, but he wouldn't have the other piece of it. So right. he couldn't piece anything together to remove anything that I had on board. That's why uh, that deck, or at least Jamal and I talked to Jamal, that he, that he needs to be running Zemus because it allows you to like come back against Ice when you just resolve a Zemus, and then like later on in the game you get whatever other piece of the combo you need. Yeah. So then round four or round five rather, I play against Alejandro, one of the Miami guys. Yep. Uh, Alejandro he... was also at the Crystal Cup Kansas too. Yep. He was also playing um, Mono Ice. It's literally one card different from Cody's build. The only thing he changed was like Bard out and Arcanist in. I do like Arcanist. Uh, we, we got to like this crazy board state. We both had an Orphan. We both had a Setzer. We both had Vayne. We both had Celeste. We both had our Anthem. We we're just sitting there for basically the entire game. Uh, doing almost nothing, but I had the advantage because I decided to establish uh, forwards early by playing the um, by going turn two, Casalian uh, Empire Sid, turn three sets are lock, uh, so I could pressure. So if he decides to play backups, I can just pressure him with damage. So not only do I get the damage advantage uh, on him, but he started discarding some of his three drops really early and never played anything to get it back where i had i had both bard and devout on the board at one time i'm putting twos and two drops and three drops so that i have something to attack through the arcanist eventually it got to the point where the only way that he could survive is the hope that uh zolera could stop my board enough mm -hmm. But the problem with the Zolera play was that we still were, uh, he was still struggling to keep a hand presence. Uh, the Zolera put him to zero cards in hand, uh, which is exactly what I needed for the Sid Osteline to finally be able to just drop the vein from the board and be able to untap the uh, Orphan and just win the game. Yeah, I don't wow. think you can ever purposely go to zero hands in an Ice Mirror because that, yeah, that exact reason. Yeah. Yeah. So I so I went five zero, uh, but I conceded the last match to Alex because I was the only undefeated. Uh, he was X one. I knew, uh, and he's one of the. I I really like the guys from the Miami crew. I'm good friends with all of them. Yeah. So I so I decided that uh, because Andy was already out of top cut that, uh, Alex that I definitely like to see at least Alex. Uh, make top cut so it goes to top four i uh it's me against jamal and alex against uh the other new mono water player mm -hmm. uh, i think that was jacob that's jacob yeah. oh yeah. is that the other one okay then the other one was matt oh, so it's matt, matt and yeah. jacob so yeah, you so, he... so jacob was the one who made top four yeah so alex played again alex played against him i played against jamal uh Playing against Jamal, it was another 2-0. That matchup, it was just really bad for him. Uh, yeah. They they had a really weird thing going into time in the other match. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex and Alex ends up putting it, uh, pulling through, Alejandro. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alejandro says, I don't, basically says, I don't want to deal with this matchup. Because you conceded, you allowed me to get into top four. Uh, you already, you already beat me. The match, what uh, the game that we played in Swiss was not, uh, 
it was a long match, but it wasn't that close. Okay. So he conceded the match to me. Just because they have a five hour drive to get home. Yeah. And sure. then, <laughs> yeah. I you do don't want to play mono ice versus mono ice for 70 minutes. Yeah, I do want to point out a few <laughs> things real quick. Uh, one, I'd like to talk about the match with Jamal because Jamal is a local here. And uh, so you and we'd all consider him a friend. So you had to kind of crush a friend out of the top four, which is like a hard place to be. Swiss is one thing, but cutting, but like being able to happen to play someone out of the top four is another thing. Um, how'd that go for you? Like, what, what were your thoughts on it? So throughout the game, I could see like I could see on Jamal's face like there's a, there's a point where Jamal very clearly gets. Uh, gets tilted, gets off kilter, right. upset, whatever. So as the game was going, he was just like not talking more and more. You could see he was getting really down. And it's re- it's especially hard for me to knock Jamal out of uh, top four because I've known Jamal for about eight years. Yeah. So it's so it didn't it didn't feel great, but at at the very least with knocking out Jamal of top four, I was still able to accomplish my goal of winning the trophy. Yeah. So at least you got your trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Um, so who, who, who got the invite to that one then? Was that uh, Alex you said? Alejandro did, yeah. yeah Alex. Alejandro, yeah. Yeah, which was and awesome actually, because I played Alejandro at the, the Crystal Cup, and we were both feeling really good about our days. And then we, we went and had lunch together. And when we came back from lunch, we were paired against each other. And he's like, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> also, something really cool to shout out to Matt. Uh, he he actually mentioned earlier in the tournament, and we're like, don't say that in front of us. <laughs> but he's like, uh, yeah, even if I win, I can't go to Nats. And we're like, oh, no. <laughs> like, so he's knocking these people out. Who are, so obviously, like, me hearing that after, I'm like, man. So he gets to this top four match and against uh, Alejandro, and they get to the last, uh, they get to the end of game two, and there's three minutes on the clock. Yeah. Now this is a mono water match against mono ice. Do you mean Jacob? Because I thought Jacob was in top four. I'm sorry. I thought is it Jacob? Yeah. I, I meant. Anyway. One does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can look it up. But um, he actually said he looked at uh. Alejandro and he's like, Listen, I can't go to Nats. If I like, are you 100%? Can you go if you win this? And he's like, Yes, that's why I'm here. Well, he's like, All right, you can have the match. And he extended the hand and didn't make him go to some weird time tie break, whatever system. Yeah. And he just gave it to him. So that was really cool. That was really cool. And, and he's super nice. Uh, well, to be fair, both Jacob and Matt are super nice. Matt yeah. was the one who, um, he, he, you know, I was missing like three cards from the cube and they were all legends. It was like uh, the new Estinian. Uh, like Minwoo and something else, and he just gave them to me. So he's like, "Hey, man, like that way we can play the full cube. Here's the rest of the cards you need for the cube, which was super nice. Like our our locals are are like a great set of people. I have to say that. Um, I do want to say something real quick about going to time, uh, because there's some. I don't think that most people know how this works, and 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 that way we can clear it up. The way it works is important. Is when you go to time, um, the match ends in a double loss. So nobody wants that. I get that. Nobody wants that. And you should generally concede because your tiebreakers are much worse, even if you don't. Um, there, there is one scenario, I, two scenarios I wouldn't concede in, and I'll talk about those real quickly. Um, but before I do, just so you guys know the way it works is if you go to a time, the match ends in a double loss. Um, mm-hmm. And so i'm saying that and I, I still don't think people understand it's not then we decide if the match goes to a double loss when you go to time the match goes to a double loss so you have to figure out if someone's going to concede when, when when that time comes up before you pass that third turn you can't pick up your cards and then just be like well i was going to be you know or i was going to beat you when the when the when at the end of turn three it is a double loss you can't roll for it at that point you can't decide what's going to happen before that. You could figure out your way, whatever that is, is that, I mean, don't bribe someone, but you know, you could, <laughs> you could say like, listen, I was ahead. So could you, would you want to concede to me? But it's important to note that especially come nationals, you don't want to go to time, start to pick up your cards and then try to figure out who's going to get the win because the judge is going to say it's a double loss period. At the end of turn three, it is a double loss. 
Um, that's really important for those people that don't know that to know that. Um, and secondly, just, just for a transparency, the only time I wouldn't concede is if, is I'm playing against someone who's like a real snob, which very, very, very seldom happens because the community is awesome. Um, right. I've only had that happen one time. And second, the only other time I would concede, and I watched this happen is my buddy, uh, what, I don't, I don't want to mention names, but he was playing against someone. Uh, Zach, you watched this. Yes, he had, yes, he, he had the clear advantage going into, turn three um dead on board it the other guy had no cards in hand it didn't matter what was happening there was zero chance that he would win they went to turn three and the guy just for the longest time argued that he didn't want to concede um because he said that well i if i win i go on to 3-0 but if you win you're just 2-1 so i'm more favored to make top cut so you should concede to me and i was thinking like that is just so absurd like, first off, you know, if the person that's undefeated loses, now you both have a chance. That's even more of a reason that you should be the one to concede. But but more importantly, if if I'm playing against Zach, and I know this has happened, we've gone to time, and Zach was just literally dead the next turn. Zach has never once even thought about not conceding. He just snap concedes when he knows he's dead. Like, yeah. that's just, that's just, I think this is like a really common courtesy. If you are going to lose the game on the next turn, then there's no reason you shouldn't concede. Yeah, there's there's one thing if you... All right, so the guy was playing... It was actually my first round opponent um, on Earthwind. Yeah. If your hand was, like, double Diablos and you had five backups up and you had, like, some Dottaluma stuff going on, I can see maybe you could make an argument for, well, I could fight my way out of this if we had more time. Right. Um, so we don't know. But he had his backups all dull and three backups in hand. Yeah, the game and, was absolutely over. And his opponent had a Captor not on six damage and he only had one forward yeah the game, the game was, yeah. and they and then our our friend had just like multiple things on the field there was and then his opponent was on six so there was zero outs there was nothing for him to think about whatever it was just over so they and they he, spent a solid like five minutes debating who yeah, should yeah, concede been closer, 10 minutes it was it, it was a long time and yeah. so at one point I said, you guys just have to make a decision. Like, we can't just sit here and wait. Like, everybody's yeah. waiting for this match to result, right? And so the guy the guy said, like, well, you know, if... So at this point, Chad realizes that if he concedes, he has better tiebreakers, even though he's at X2, so he's probably not going to make it in a 17-round person. But so Chad's sitting here considering conceding, and I just said... I looked him straight in the eyes and said, Chad, this is the one time I wouldn't concede. Sign the match slip a, dub Sign the match slip a double loss and let's go. Mm -hmm. Like, because that's absolutely what you should do. You just sign a double loss and be like... You know, good luck in your next round. Um, but at that, as soon as I said that, the guy says, "Fine, I'll concede." But oh, I was just like, "I worked out." Well, you know, but I'm just like, I, I just could not believe that. I don't know, like for and me, for the record, this has nothing to do with the fact it was one of our friends either. This you're right, of course not. It's, yeah, it's the situation, not the like who it was, whatever. Like, if if I had been that person, Zach would have been like, "What the heck, dude? Like, why wouldn't you concede there?" I mean, I, I wouldn't yeah. have been that person, but, you know, Zach would have been like, or same thing, if I saw Zach doing that, and I'd be like, Zach, dude, like, you're dead next turn. What in yeah. the world did that guy do to you that you did not concede? Exactly. I'd expect someone to tell me, like, dude, come on. <laughs> like, what did that guy do to you that you did not concede that matchup, you know? Right. Like, but, yeah, so that yeah. that's just something, that's that's something that I think everyone should know about the way that going to time works. Um, Although... I was going to say, to be fair, it's a good thing you said that, like, clarifying what double loss actually means, because the opponent... At least he claimed that he was slightly confused. He thought it meant you get two losses. Yes. I've heard people say that. I don't know how to ever think that. But I don't, right. I don't so know. a double yeah. loss is simply you get a loss and your opponent gets a loss. Neither person gets a win. It is, but it is almost as bad as a double loss because of what it does to your breakers. If you move to X and two, it is extremely bad for you. Um, yeah, because I mean, think about it. It's, it's just by the nature of the way math works. Uh, if your breakers are based on how your opponent did and he also got a loss, even while you got a loss, it's obviously ex exponentially bad. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm so glad you're bringing this up, Sam. Yeah. Like that's if anyone takes anything away from this podcast today, that, like, that's the most <laughs> important thing. Like we had a long talk at this before the tournament in Omaha when we were all in the food court. It's like, hey, everyone, you know, do not take a double loss. Even if you got to fall on the sword and give it to your opponent when you clearly won, just yep. don't take that double loss. It's so bad for your tie breaks. Um, we devised like a polite strategy. Like once time is called, you know, the clock's off. You're on turn one or of turn Of course, two, right. And, 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 and you should so, slow down at that point. There's, there's yeah, no and that's when you start the conversation. You like, in case your opponent doesn't know, you should politely say, hey, just so you know, a double loss is the worst thing for both of us. So, you know, depending on how this goes, 
you know, you know, hopefully someone does the honorable thing. You, know, you can't really say, hey, I want you to concede to me. It's right. like a very fine line. Right. But like at turn zero, you can start that conversation. Right. And, and of course, live up to your word. If he, right, yeah. if your opponent's going to beat you, fall on your sword for them to win, and you hope they do the same. And if it's really tight, you know, you don't know who's going to win, someone's just got to do it. Like it's just the worst thing ever to take the double loss. That's the most important note. I'm really glad you brought that up, Sam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that that's really true. I think that you should never – like, don't ever, like, kind of be like, well, maybe, like, in four turns. It's, it's not like that. Look, what does the game state look like right now? Not, not like, well, does your deck contain Shantoto? Could you possibly get out of this? It's, it's very much like, what does the game state look like right now? Okay, let's mm-hmm. make a, let's make an informed decision based off that and move forward. Um, and, and there's no reason not to do that, I think. But right. anyway, so moving on. Uh, speaking of thing <laughs> about time limit, we've now got an event with no time limit. Um, that's the, the team event coming up. Um, the team event is a, an event that we're going to do, be doing on Octagon. And what it is, is, is you'll have a, a team of three plus a backup, right? So for example, my team right now is myself, Zach and Angel at, with, uh, Cody as our backup. Um, and I believe, uh, for example, another team is, uh, Jonathan Sorde, uh, Andy Carmona, Alejandro and Alfred as their backup. And so yeah. basically what it is, is the three decks that you run, um, you don't have to have a deck list, but they can't share cards more than three. So, like, if I have two Shantotos, Zach can play one, Angel can play zero. And so it's really just, like, the world's format. Right. It's the world's format split up among your team members. And then you play. We're not exactly sure what's going to happen, but... I know, that, I know, like, right now that there's uh, Robert Phillips, Joshua Freeman Birch, and Jamie Fulker are on a single team. I just want to say that, like, if there's ever been overkill on a team, it's absolutely, I, I just, I don't know. Like, so, so then, is is a teammate playing game one, another teammate play game two, another teammate play game three? You, maybe. Uh, you, maybe they haven't announced exactly how they do it. Yeah. The way, so we sometimes run this tournament here in Tampa, and the way we do it is all three of you will sit across from each other. Obviously, that's not going to happen in Octagon. Uh, and you randomize who you play with. So you don't know, like, well, Zach's going to be on Mono Ice, so we'll pair up this guy against him. It's right. random, and you all three play at the same time, and the, whoever wins the best two out of three wins the match. Yeah, we did it by position. So, like, you always sit in the same, like, order. So right. whoever you sit across from is who you play. Because right, otherwise, yeah. yeah, you can do this whole metagaming thing. Right, so, like, no. I could, like, I think on our position, we ha- we have a position set. I don't remember what it was. But whoever's name, Zach ended up putting the names down. So whoever's name who went down first will be like position one, two, and then three. And then mm-hmm. if they're not playing, let's so like let's say I sit one out, uh, then Cody will play for me in that position. Uh, now whether he has to play a fourth deck or he has to play my deck is unclear at the moment. Um, okay. That'd be very interesting if it went to a fourth deck. That'll get pretty steep. It would be because you have to build four decks, but it is really cool that you get to build these decks. Um, one thing that's even cooler is that since deck lists aren't required, like if you're kind of working on a deck, but there are some individual choices you don't want to put out there, these these events aren't necessarily going to spoil that chance for you, which is pretty cool, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, that, that's when the does that te- start? So that start, I think the last sign up day is tomorrow, right? And I think yeah, they only have one spot left. British time. Yeah. Yeah. So they have one spot open. Um, if you don't know the group, it's it's FFTCG space uh, octagon O C T G N. Um, yep. And then so, you have to go to the Eidolon Festival slash yep. team whatever event page. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so and again, we've done podcasts on Octagon before, but I know a lot of our our listeners still haven't been able to try it out yet. Or if you have a Mac like uh, C- Cody over here, <laughs> you don't get to, you don't get to play on it, but. So Octagon is a great way to play for free. Uh, if you log on, you'll also you'll also uh, you'll often see Alfred playing against Andy Carmona. Uh, <laughs> I they were nice enough to let me tune into their match yesterday. Although I don't know if Alfred even noticed I was watching. But did did you notice it, Alfred, know, or no? All I know is something. I was supposed to drop Shantara, but I didn't have one in hand. Oh, no, no. So what happened is you had, like, like he just kept playing forwards to the board. At one point, he had Pain, Yuna, Riku, and Garnet, and you had just yeah. played your third forward. I'm like, oh, God, here comes the Shantoto. And then you're like, <laughs> and I'll play my Eeld Narch. And I was like, oh, this game's over. <laughs> 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 this game's way over. But, yeah. So, yeah, so you guys can play on there. But, anyway, so the, the team, I think the team format's really cool. 
Um, Magic the Gathering actually now has a thing where you can qualify for the Pro Tour with a team event. So, like, you know, you can show up and you can go with two friends to the Pro Tour. Uh, there's nothing cooler than, than that to me. I think it would be really cool to see that in Final Fantasy. What do you, what do you, Ben, what do you think about that? Like, what if, what if your qualification here meant that you could take two friends with you to Nats to play in a team event? Would that be better or would you rather just be the single event that we have now? Oh, no, that'd be awesome. I mean, you know our cash team. We would crush it. I know, like, your team's probably going to crush. Like, we have a lot of confidence in our group, but I, I have a lot of confidence in my teammates as well. Um, I mean, Square Enix is, like, halfway there. They kind of did that with Worlds, you know, having right. you can't share three of a kind across three decks. Um, right. So, I mean, they just got to take it a step forward. I think it'd be awesome. I mean, they already have a sealed qualification, you know, the Crystal Cup. Right, yeah. On, there's a sealed right. format. So that opens the door for other formats to qualify in. Like It is... It is More something than one that they're way to be good at this game. Right. And they also have the all star format too, which we do a lot here in Tampa. Uh, this Friday night we'll be doing a uh, cube draft, which is like the all star mm-hmm. draft. Um, my, my list is different from the actual official list, but I expect the official list to change eventually anyway. So I like to keep my list updated. But yeah, so there What's is all star. So all star is, um, do you know what cubing is? Is it magic? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also, it's Final Fantasy cube. So I actually have one built. All-Star. Yeah, that, I I mean I don't, but that's that's what they call it. Um, I have mine with me. I'll bring it up here in a second. But they so they have um, that's what they uh, Square Enix decided to call it. Um, but so the, you can actually qualify. They they've announced that they're gonna, not qualified for Worlds, but they're going to have a tournament. I think in Japan that maybe qualifies for Worlds or qualifies for something. Oh, that'd um, be interesting. In the All Star format, so it's a, it's an officially like sanctioned format, which is pretty cool. Um, so here I'll just pull up my box real quick. So here's where I keep my All Star thing in it's like super you know so basically in here um is the all-star cube so i've actually never had to pull this out on camera before but so then it's like you know one of every card or whatever of at least the good cards Mm -hmm. um in final Mm -hmm. fantasy and i actually like that i keep it in these these six uh deck boxes too because you can actually do a sealed thing so like if you you just like this is your sealed pool. You open this. You have six players. You build your deck out of here, just like you would if it's like a pre-release, which mm-hmm. is actually really cool too, and a great way to practice. If you guys ha- don't have a lot of limited practice, build an all-star draft. You can build a really cheap one. You can build a like a commons and rares, like a popper one, mm-hmm. uh, which is another format I want to talk about uh, too. So I think that's really cool. Uh, Alfred, what what do you think about the a world's format like official event that would invite people to Nats? How would you feel about that? Oh, uh, I really like World's Format purely because I really like diversity in, uh, in deck building and being able to see multiple elements and being able to see multiple elements and how different choices for mon- monocolor versus dual color. And now uh, with how recent formats have been going, uh, three color decks, Yeah, right. it's very interesting. Yeah. Because your element choices uh sometimes you're gonna be able to see what people can do with the lesser used elements like with how water's not been doing as well as it has in like opus three or fire not doing things ever (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's really interesting too yeah And, and you have things like wind for example so like Who's going to get the wind? Because, like, tricolor support wants wind. Um, the daddy deck wants wind. Uh, some of the water decks, particularly the Fasoya decks, want wind. So, like, it is interesting to see, right. like, how you split up those cards, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like it also weeds out the one-trick ponies. You know, someone that's just yeah. good with just one deck, that's all they play. You know, right. it, it diversifies your skill set, which is what I think is a good skill set to have to be able to play anything at any time. It That's does, what I love yeah. most about it, yeah. I mean, the process to getting to that point is fun, too. Like, figuring out how you can weave in. Like, if you want to play water in two decks, like, oh, which half of water am I playing? Like, that's mm-hmm. cool, me, too. Right, and but it yeah, also the... it stops your Shantoto, uh, you know, spread. Yeah, right. Which is so the most interesting. <laughs> your Shantoto spread. Mine, too. yeah, yeah, that's pretty fair, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, you could either do, you know, each deck has one Star Sybil, one Shantoto, one Chaos, one Cam or something. Or, <laughs> um, <laughs> so... But then, but yeah, you, then you get to play all these different decks. Like, I might have to play Mono Lightning, which I don't have a ton of experience on, but it's something that I'd like to learn. But I've never had, you know, the drive to play because I always have something else to yeah. do. Where if I had to build three decks, that might be one of my three. What do you guys think if they had a 
and, and this isn't basically on the world's format, but going dipping into the other formats, I know uh, you can see that that nice pretty poster behind Ben back there. He won that actually playing title format. What do you guys think that if we had some sort of, uh, you know, I, I, it's a cup, some sort of GP like event, uh, maybe like three spread out across the United States or maybe four even uh, so the, uh, the Western guys get one too. Um, what if it was one person plays uh, Opus 6 Constructed, one person plays Title, and one person plays something like Popper? Um, or so, so different formats. Uh, and in these big events, you know, maybe the top two, just the finals, those six people, and I say six because you'd have three players on a team, the right. top two teams get invites to Worlds or invites to Nats at the very least. Like this, That sounds pretty dope, right? That sounds awesome because you get to – it turns into not everyone's going to be playing the – everybody gets to play a different game of Final Fantasy, which yeah. is very interesting. Something I think would be cool too is is in order to make this last chance qualifier a little more fun or a little more like, hey, me and my team want to go, but can we justify splitting the hotel and can we split by the gas? What if something like the last chance qualifier, the very last event to internationals, was this team event where the three people got to internationals or like the, the top six. Like right now, I think they're giving out eight invites. It's like the entire top eight or maybe it's top four. But either way, mm -hmm. instead of doing that, we could do like the top three teams um would get the invite to nats that seems like really cool to me that'd be interesting that'd be sure. great I mean, economical for the team it just makes sense to bring more people out there because yeah the whole team gets qualified in at that point right so if, if let's say let's say like you know i was let's let's say zach uh myself and cody were qualified but we wanted to play and so we, we could split the hotel you know we could split the food we could split all the arrangements uh and in the three of us going together, we feel pretty good about our odds, increases our odds, and we feel like we could spike this event and would make the trip a lot, a lot more worth it. Whereas, like, right now, for example, let's say that Zach doesn't win one of these qualifications coming up. I don't see Zach flying out to L.A. to play the night before Nationals to see if he can make the event. Whereas, like, yeah, at least actually, playing in a one-of-a-kind team event would be amazing right especially yeah, if there's a right. crystal cup involved if you've got some sort of mm -hmm. trophy for it then it would be worth going and if you don't if you make nationals great if you don't at least you had a great time and you got to play for something else yeah you're yeah, either all in or you're all out sorry no it's just it's what a feel bad you know if you guys go mm -hmm. and you all play in the last chance qualifier as it stands now it goes a team of like three or x or whatever and all right. but one person gets in right and what a feel bad for that one guy you know right yeah, yeah. and i talked or i asked uh official like square about it and i was told that if you don't qualify or you're not playing in nationals you're not gonna be allowed into the venue so yeah, i would horrible. i would Ooh. consider taking that gamble for trying to play for a top eight position uh to, yeah. to get qualified if upon me choking maybe i could at least go into the event and play side events or support my teammates whatever else but since that option is not available for me it highly de-incentivizes me to go yeah and, and i and don't I, know how i feel about it yet yeah and so i bring the reason i bring this up guys is i feel like you know and, and ben kind of touched on this earlier that square enix is making like ginormous strides of improvements in this game we are constantly seeing updates i mean Maybe it seems small to you guys, but the release of top 16 deck, li uh, deck lists going into day two was insane to me. Like, was was the coolest thing to come out of uh, the, the Crystal Cups for me. Um, but, you know, just the support with the All-Star drafts, like making cubing like an official format. Like, you know, even just something as, si as simple as like having a, a banned card and title means that they're taking the format seriously. Um, you know, so so they're they're making these really cool waves. And they're really listening to what people want, um, which is, you know, look, I, I, I've enjoyed magic for a long time. Okay. And I get that it's mm -hmm. a very well run, at least in the past card game. So I have no, no problems with it, but you know, the, the way it's run, like at least, at least I feel like I'm being listened to from the square side. So if you right. guys think that like, oh it could be improved by this and it could be improved by this but i mean look at where it was last year look at our prizing for the first crystal cup look at nationals day two reset last year look at like all the things that have changed and and you you have a new company new at running tcgs they're not trying to do things exactly like magic but they are at least listening and updating things so that they are better right 
Right. I mean, that shows me like I'm super confident in the future of Final Fantasy for sure. Um, and I think like something like these team events could be something. So when I say them, I'm not even expe- I'm not expecting it to happen. But do I think it's possible? Absolutely. It would be so cool to have a team event where where the three of us qualified or something like that. Yeah. It'd be awesome. I mean, yeah, the I more formats it supports, it just increases the value of the card. Then the game itself, like when we did our title tournament where I won this awesome Tifa, it was like you saw the coolest decks that you would never see in any other format. Like it's just so amazing the awesome decks you could build in a completely different format with different rules. Right. right yeah, that's a good point. If you know, um, if I were to play Popper, for example, I think and for those that don't know, Popper is commons and rares only. Um, some people consider starters, but I think that starters kind of break it, uh, particularly yeah. in the water format. Um, but like, I'd be playing a Cognazzo deck because. The, <laughs> only only one color has access to a wrath, and that is blue. Um, Vikings, Kanyazo, yeah. Oh yeah, it'd be nuts, right? Oh, and Layla's a rare, right? Oh, she heroic. Uh, actually, she's heroic, I think. Oh, thank yeah. God, because that that <laughs> <laughs> that would be the only deck in Popper for a very long time. But like right now, for example, like Mono Earth is extremely good in Popper. Uh, yeah. Mono Water is pretty good in Popper. Uh, it, it, you know. Um, the title format has a ton of viable decks. Ben, what did you end up playing? Uh, cadets. Cadets. Just, oh, there you go. Yeah, cadets. Yeah. I was not expecting. That's why we never play in any other format, but it was just so broken. Um, they just all synergize so well. And we don't have to worry about um, color fixing. It just bam, you're in. Right, and that was prior to Opus Six. Now you have there's more there's Title Zero support in Opus Six, right? Yeah, but they're like Agito cadets, and so they don't synergize as well with the regular okay. cadets. Um, it's it's right. weird. Like uh, I had but you, access you, to them. you could have like Vermilion though, for example, right? The is that a Type Zero? And card? everyone else, it is. Everyone else ran Pantry. it, in the deck, but I actually didn't even use it. No, I mean um, I mean the new Vermilion, uh, the backup. Oh, oh that yeah, just casts yeah. casts. It would cast Ifrit for free. Yeah, because there's, the awesome. there's the type there's the type O Ifrit right. So in the type zero summons, or so, that's pretty much how you type build zero, yeah. a, a title series deck. For those of you that don't know, and you want to get into it, you look, look at, at what summons title, first. Yeah. Look at your summons package. Mm-hmm. And that's what like ruled me out of FF seven. I want to play seven because all the awesome clouds, but, but like, now they got had... some summons in this one. For example, they got Titan. Yep. Yep. I think the new Leviathan, I think is even a seven deck as well, or a seven it, title. It might but, be. Yeah, uh, I, I actually don't eight. know. Uh-huh. Oh, huh. I, I think it, it, yeah. I think it is seven. Uh, also, uh, that Layla is a rare, by the way, the four drop. Oh my gosh! Oh, is oh, it really? Oh, yeah, the gosh. original, the original Layla was a hero, but this one is a rare. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. Does four have summons? Yeah, it is a rare. I have it right here. Jeez. Four has a Sura. Um, I think maybe one other summon. It doesn't have many though. No, uh, uh, four took second place in the title series. Um, oh, it four was, is uh, sick. Yeah, Archings. Just Archings was so good. You have Golbez to search two of them, and you can go get Edward, so you can't get hasted out. Oh yeah. Oh, we just lost Ben. Okay, I'll see if I can add him again, too. Yeah, I was trying to find that Leviathan. It's from seven. It's see... from seven. Oh, you just looked it up? Yeah, yeah. So they, 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 they did get that, which is awesome. And the Titan is also seven, yeah. All right, let me see if I can... Oh, it just looks like all of his stuff got muted or whatever. Um, Do we have anything... Wanna... Do we have... Go ahead, so, Alfred. The four build that I actually want to play is the Fusoya build. Just because, like, having... Being able to play multiple Cecils on board, you could just have what you could have the uh, OG Dark Knight Cecil <laughs> be able to fu- be able to get get in your Fusoya plays, oh, then yeah. play the, then play the Dark Knight Legend, uh, blow something up. Yeah, because you can just dark people. Fusoya. The water yeah. one protects them both. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all everywhere. That's the dream for me. Yeah, I I played some title decks uh, for fun when I was in Boston. I I actually brought Fasoya. Um, I brought like a Palin Porum deck too. That like I, I I played between the two of them. Uh, I know like typically if you're like a tryhard, uh, you could play uh, the Tactics deck, right? Because it, it has all the good summons. Yeah, yeah, it does. So like if you ever attack the Tactics deck, you're going to get ex bursted. <laughs> Which is pretty cool, but yeah, mm. I I think it, I think that like just the amount of like deck building going into it would be really cool. I think that if we had an event for Popper, um, on that scale where hey, look, not only are you playing for an invite, but your record directly correlates to your two teammates getting invites to this big tournament, then you would see the Popper format explode with popularity. Oh yeah, because it would matter. 
Uh, right, right. Which sure. is really cool. Um, I don't know that I don't see a way that they could do it with draft. Um, like maybe cube because we do t- so the way we do cubing too in Tampa, by the way, is we do team cubes. So we usually split. Last time we did uh, teams of five uh, or two teams of five, so we had ten yep. people. But normally we'd like to do two teams of four. Um, and so you alternate. So like if <clears throat> if Alfred's sitting on my left and Zach's on my, on my right, neither of them are on my team. So if I open like a a busted card, like Altima, for example, is very good in cube. I'm not going to pass it to Zach if I think he might play it. Particularly like let's say I passed him like a Terra and like he has ways right. to search for this Altima or I pass him like a Rydia. I'm certainly just going to take that Altima even if there's a better pick in those colors. Uh, which is something extremely unfamiliar with a lot of people who have not done a lot of drafting. Uh, so I don't know if they would be able to do team drafts because it'd be really hard to like the way it worked. But I could see like a team sealed event where like you get uh, 12 packs and you need to build this pool. Or maybe you get less. Maybe you get like, like we could work with maybe like, no, maybe 12 packs is the most I'd want to do with three people. That's already really pushing it. But I could see building three decks out of 12 packs. Uh three decent decks and you could do that to qualify and people would take sealed at least more seriously that being said um that might even be good for brick and mortar stores because they would sell a lot of packs but for the actual uh game to progress i think the seeing title and seeing um popper be more relevant formats would be really cool you know what it takes to make really good events though is really good prize supports that's like i hate to say that like Players aren't selfish, but they do want to be rewarded for good play and like putting all this time and investment into making a good deck. And so, like the event that we went to, um, there was the local Shane Cox who makes these Perler Bead arts, like this Tifa behind me. Yeah. And he has uh, his company Steel Steel Sky Studios, excuse me. Um, and he we all knew he was putting up this for the first place prize on top of other stuff. Out like twenty something people for a title series tournament. You know, like that's it was massive. It was really huge. And so. As long as you put something cool on the line and make it worth it for the players, Square could yeah. promote any format that they wanted to realistically. Yeah, you know. Is that the Perler Bead? Art? Yeah, that's all yeah. Perler Bead. These weren't, yeah, that's oh, all wow. beads right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, actually, you know, our sponsor, Cards of Ulysses, uh, the owner, James Lockwood, did something similar with his event. Um, <clears throat> basically, there was a, a Play Arts, uh, the. the Play Arts available, but it wasn't even that. He advertised this amazing trophy. That uh, Andy Carmona ended up taking in the finals, beating our our own Angel Garcia, um, and just the him advertising that giant trophy along with some right. really cool price support got so. I mean, how many people do we have out for that event? Forty something. Forty something, right? And, and mind you, this That's is a not lot. a Square Enix. This is not a Square Enix uh, sponsored event. It was in a clubhouse to an apartment complex, and it was slammed. It was so packed. Yeah, we had to play outside on like the we, pool tables and we had stuff. To play outside. Yeah, yeah. We literally were outside playing. Um, the pool side tables, not an actual. Pool you know, table. I actually played against one of the uh, Alex, who's one of the uh, Saint Petersburg guys, out outside, uh, mm-hmm. but the light wasn't come on. So we we actually had one of the the people on staff hold a camera phone, fo- uh, a camera <laughs> like their phone flashlight above us as we yeah. played out in the dark, <clears throat> and it's just yep. like that's just how many people we had uh, because. People want to come out for, for exactly what uh, you know Ben said, like these awesome prizes. You know, I have no doubt that like Alfred wanted to qualify for nationals, but like that Minfilia statue, that Minfilia, that Minfilia trophy he got, I'm sure had some sort of incentive for him trying to go back and win another one. Oh yeah, yeah. he's trying to, in his words, monopolize trophies, right? <laughs> you want <laughs> I want all the Minfilia trophies. Well. You have to travel. It's gorgeous. Can, yeah, it is. It's really gorgeous. I brought it up to my uh, shop after I came back from Omaha, and people were literally like drooling over it and like, oh, we all want to go to the qualifiers this weekend and try and get their trophy. Heck, even like oh. Aaron, who took, you know, runner up at the Crystal Cups, like, I want that trophy. It's like, dude, you already have a seat. He's like, I know, I want that trophy. Exactly. <laughs> that, and, and I had told Zach, too, uh, we talked about it a lot. Like, I, I want that trophy more than anything. Like, that's what I want for, I want to go for. Um, and so I'm very much considering the Miami one. It's a bit far of a drive. Uh, for something that I'm already qualified for, but I'm 100% locked in going to the Orlando one. Um, plus, I, I'd like to see some more Orlando guys. Uh, I'm pretty good friends with those guys out there. I love those guys. Um, so it'd be cool to see them, especially Tony. I know Alfred, you want to go see Tony, right? Of course. Yeah. So you know, and last time, last time we went out there, we actually got to have uh, a really good dinner 
um, at least a really good dinner experience uh, yeah. with the Miami guys. So that was really cool. And that's one of the coolest things if you're traveling to these events, right, is is that after event dinner, I remember like not just that event, but like after the Tampa Petite Cup, like just going out with those guys to dinner. Like we went with – we actually got to go out with uh, Richard Brady, RB from Square, from Square Enix. We were out with him and we went, it just ended up going to Moe's. And it was just yeah. – uh, we just talk. That's actually where I I got to talk with James Lockwood from Cars of Evilies, um, and that's where I got to talk with Sergio, um, and 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 that's where I really got to to meet Andy, and I became friends with Andy and Jonathan. Like, so like these events are like really cool. Um, I would like to see, uh, like like we're talking about like, like the prize support increased, um, just a I, little bit. Like I'm not trying to be greedy, but just a little bit. Yeah, and and I'm not even. And so for me, like when I go to an event, I want to see like. A ton of packs because i'm a foil yeah. hoarder that's what i want uh, but for most people like that's just like a trophy like, like give us the menphilia trophies uh if you guys saw the emerald cup which was not a square enix event but it was like something that someone they custom commissioned for an event over in europe the emerald trophy was the coolest trophy i've seen in all of final yeah, fantasy ever was it was really cool we trophy yeah ironically oh. i'm holding it broke off a piece of a chocobo foot <laughs> I don't know why I just happened to be holding this that I actually won in the uh, the last bearded uh, collectible event that I went down there. Uh, the, yep. the foot broke off in the, in the move, but it was cool to be able to just get like a, a unique little chocobo that no one else had. Yeah, it's three D printed. It was three D so. printed chocobo. Yeah. So hey, it was, actually, I got really cool. I got to show you something here. So I don't know if people know this, and hopefully I can get some good light on it. This is my Squall Kai Arts figure. It's a good that one. Sam got first place at crystal cup like this was an awesome first place prize like people would kill for this myself included and the reason it's in my hands is because sam is the most awesome guy in the world and he saw how heartbroken i was taking 17th place and he knew ff8 and squall like my favorite and he just totally hooked me up with it like he took the coolest prize that anyone could have ever got and he was just so gracious and gave it so Thank you again for that, Sam. I haven't been able to yeah. give you a shout out, but I can't think of a better time to do it while we're talking I'm, about awesome prizes than right now. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Yeah, I was. It's funny because it's it, it is it is one of the the few like high arts that I really like too because I love FF8, uh, but it, it's not my favorite, and I heard it was your favorite. So, hey, if I win a high arts and it's your favorite, you're getting it. By the way, oh, deal, deal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the one yeah. that I really liked was from uh was the Warrior of Light pack from the Petite Cup. Oh, I won that oh. too. <laughs> oh, oh man, Sam! Oh, losing. Sam offered that to me. I was so yeah. nervous because I wanted that so badly. What was yeah, it, Alfred? Al it was the Warrior of Light from FF1, um, like the Dissidia yeah. figure, um, Kai Arts. It was the most, excuse the language, oh, badass okay. thing ever. I thought I said it was a hat. I'm like, I don't remember seeing that. But okay, yep. gotcha. no, and um, and Sam going into the finals of the Petite Cup, sorry, Petite Cup in Kansas City. He's like, Sam's just like, hey, I gonna be honest with you, i really want the foils binder um it was a play set of opus four foils signed all all signed yeah yeah like Amazon. and and i don't want anything said, else ben, <laughs> he's like you can have the kai arts figure you can have the other binder you can have your choice on play mat you can have it all i just want the foils binder of course we'll still play it after the trophy and i learned what the word hubris meant after that tournament because i said no sam i think i will just play it out and you know zach i just beat you in the semifinals with the exact same 50 Yep. It's like, oh, no, I got this. I just 2 0 the exact same 50. I can totally do this. And it was an epic match. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but good. when I didn't get that figure, and that's all I wanted from the entire event, just like Alfred, you know, yeah. it's just like, oh, I, I need to <laughs> learn See, my lesson. And funny enough, I would have given time. you that one if I had known. I didn't know that you wanted it that much. Yeah, no, no one had told me. I actually didn't learn about that until the Crystal Cup Kansas this time around where I was going to trade the Squall, right? And I was going to trade it. I think I was actually going to trade to Aaron. And he's like, well, if he trades to me, I'm just going to hold it in front of Ben because he wants this so bad. It's his favorite character from his favorite game. And I did the same thing with the Warrior of Light. And I was like, oh, no, never mind. I'm just going to give it to Ben. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, he was going to let that one gloat over me for sure. So yeah, well, I'm glad I appreciate it, that. Yeah, I'm glad it, uh, it made it into um, the, the right hands. Um, anyway. yeah, it's, on, it's, it's on the trophy shelf with the Mephilia yeah. trophy and the, the Petite Cup finalist trophy. Yeah, so is, is there anything else we got to cover for today? I think uh, we covered everything that we had scheduled and, and more. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to give a tip to people playing in local qualifiers this week. Sure. Um, you know, obviously Opus 6 is in the meta now. So anyone that's going to a weekend, it's your first weekend with Opus 6. Um, this is going to be the weekend that defines good deck building skills. You know, it's all undefined right now. Um, hopefully you've got a good group that you're playtesting with. But, you know, 
bring something that you're not sure like how well it's going to do but if it's playing well in your group just bring it like no one's going to know how to counter it right away they're going to have to adapt on the spot right um everything's game like no pun intended everything's game this weekend so so ben if if you had if you had just one card that you would say be on the lookout for or you should consider playing what would it be just one card no context I, i want no context just give me one card off the top uh estinian okay Legend of Sydney. okay what about you alfred surprise new al sid okay new al sid all right what about you zach minfilia minfilia yeah i i would i would say for me i was gonna say that for me it'd be layla uh the rare um oh. apparently found that out what about you what about you cody uh renoa a legend from oh uh, interesting so there are a lot of cards that you guys should be ready for <laughs> Um, or at least be considered playing. Legends of Dane as well. That's my second choice. I thought someone else would say it, but that one I think is going to be really good too. Yeah, uh, a lot of lists I've seen are playing him, and not even just the combos. A lot a lot of non-ice decks I've been seeing are playing him too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and YRP is going to be huge. Like my playtest group just last night brought three different YRP yeah, decks. Yeah, thanks, again, thanks you know? RB. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, although so I haven't seen fun. a lot of the water ones, and I don't like them. I like RBs with the earth a lot more. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, yeah I love it a lot. Really um, I almost ran YRP at the uh, at the Crystal Cup, but it just loses so hard to Mono Ice, so I just like, yeah. gave up that route. Yeah. So, hey, before before we go, uh, Ben, do you have any shout outs you want to do? Yeah, I gotta give one main shout out to Pat. Pat Giles, my best friend since we were teenagers. We've been playing TCGs ever since we were kids. My roommate, my number one playtesting buddy. Like, he playtests with me so much. He's the reason where I'm at right now, and literally, he's the reason I have my invite to Nashville. And he's a super so. nice guy too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah he's so good if you guys ever have to play him in a tournament and we hope he gets his invite as well like if you guys see him at nats you know he's not gonna fly under the radar now if i'm giving him this really big shout out but be <laughs> be scared like he's yeah. one of the top players there is now what about you alfred um i'd like to shout out to the miami crew and to chad uh one of the guys from our locals they chad is uh, uh, an awesome dude yeah yeah. They give they put me through a lot of work when it comes to playtesting because especially uh, with how Chad likes to bring in uh a a twist a slightly twisted variant of really good decks that it just always keeps me on my toes about new options. Mm-hmm. For sure. So definitely shout outs to Chad and always and definitely get a shout out to uh what, what, to the Miami crew, Alex, congrats on making your qualification. Yeah, I'm and excited that he made it too. Better. Okay, guys, well, that, that about uh, wraps us out here. I uh, just want to give one big shout out to Cards of Evil East again for sponsoring the podcast. Yep, there's <laughs> Zach showing it off. <laughs> and then I uh, want to give a big shout out to uh, Ben and Alfred for joining us today. Thanks, thanks and guys. Time out of the night. Uh, congratulations yeah, to you guys. Can't wait to see you guys at Nationals. And then, Ben, obviously, I'll see you this weekend at the local. Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to that, Cody. Yeah, safe travels up there. It'll be fun. Man, I'm so yes, jealous you... that you guys get to hang out. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. But I guess, could the be th- a... I guess the three of us get to hang out all the time, too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, uh, as always, guys, uh, make sure to like the video. Uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, comment down below if there's any, any questions for us. We're proud to answer any of those. Uh, and then just subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content. And we are the Choker Bros, and I am Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Burrell. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. See you next week. <laughs>